Hey guys, welcome back. Today we are continuing our lessons on motion, and today we're going to talk about acceleration. So acceleration is going to tie in concepts of speed and velocity, which was in our last lesson. So similarly as last time, I'm going to ask you if you have not done your previous lesson to go back and make sure you do that first because this won't make sense unless that one is done, okay? But just to recap really quickly the difference between speed and velocity, speed is the distance traveled by an object divided by the time the object is in motion. So 50 miles per hour, 25 meters per second, 10 kilometers per hour, that sort of thing. Velocity is speed with direction, okay? So where speed is distance over time, velocity is displacement over time. Um, so 45, 44 miles to, per second to the north would be an example of velocity because velocity, remember, is a vector quantity, so it needs that distance associated with it, okay? But all of these units, whether it's speed or velocity, is going to be in meters per second, kilometers per hour, or miles per hour, okay? And this is just a reminder of our speed and velocity equations. So V is equal to D over T. And if we're asking for an average speed or an average velocity, it's just going to be the total distance over the total time. So that's a new equation that's being introduced, but it's pretty simple. So if a problem is asking you for average speed or velocity, it's just going to be the total distance over the total time. Okay, so now that we've refreshed ourselves on speed and velocity, let's talk about acceleration. So acceleration is the rate of change in velocity, or it's a change of velocity in a given time, okay? So just like velocity, acceleration is going to be a vector, okay? So acceleration, since it is a vector, is going to have a distance associated with, with it as well. So here is your acceleration formula that we're going to need to know. Of course, make sure you write it in your notes so you can have it in front of you on assessments. Um, you're not going to have to memorize this formula, so it'll be given to you on your test and your final exam, but you want to have it in your notes for sure so that you can access it easily. So acceleration is going to be equal to final velocity minus initial velocity over time. Okay, so A is the acceleration. The units are going to be in meters per second squared or meters per second per second. It's cleaner to just say meters per second squared. VF is the final velocity. That's in meters per second. VI is the initial velocity, also in meters per second. And then T is time, typically in seconds. Okay, so this is going to be the formula we're going to use to help us solve acceleration problems today. Now, with speed and velocity as well as acceleration, um, when you're given word problems, you won't necessarily always be solving for acceleration. As long as you're giving th given three of the four variables in this problem, you could solve for it. So what I mean by that, you could be asked to solve for any of these variables. So you could be asked to solve for acceleration, for final velocity, initial velocity, or the time in the problem, just depending on what the word problem tells us. And of course, we will be doing some examples together. So acceleration is an increase in speed, right? We've probably all experienced acceleration on a roller coaster, maybe in the car, but deceleration is ba basically just a negative acceleration. So we use the same formula for deceleration, except your answer is going to be negative. Now, sometimes students can get a little uh, unsure of themselves when they're doing these problems because they come up with a negative number and they think that that can't be right. You can have a negative number in these problems. It just means that the object is slowing down. So it's decelerating, okay? So this is where you decrease your speed. So now let's work some example problems using the new formula that we've learned today. So question one says, a car starts from rest and accelerates to 20 meters per second in four seconds. What is the car's acceleration? Okay, so we're gonna be using our acceleration formula. And we know that the acceleration is equal to our VF 
minus r vi over time. Now, first thing I want you to always do when you're working these motion problems is make sure you know, number one, what equation you're going to use, and number two, what your variables are. Okay, so list the equation and the variables first before you start plugging anything in. Okay, so our final velocity here Our final velocity is going to be 20 meters per second because it starts at rest, which is zero, and it accelerates to 20 meters per second. So our final is 20 meters per second. Our initial, It says that the car starts from rest. If you see a problem that says it starts from rest or something is dropped, that means its initial velocity is just zero. Okay. And then our time, our problem tells us it takes four seconds. And now we just plug this in because we're looking for acceleration. So this would be our final, which is 20 meters per second. And I'm not going to write my units just for the sake of space, but remember when you're writing these out, you always want to keep your units. 20 meters per second minus 0 meters per second over 4, and that's seconds. So we'll have 20 minus 0 is 20 divided by 4, and that's going to equal 5 meters, and then the units for acceleration are seconds squared. Okay, so your answer here is 5 meters per second squared. So the acceleration of this car is 5 meters per second squared. So again, you always want to write down your formula. So if you were doing a speed problem, you'd write down the formula for speed, velocity, same thing, acceleration, same thing. We want to make sure we know what formula we need to be using, and then we identify our variables from the problem before plugging it in, okay? So number two is exactly the same. So this is the same um, problem as before with your plugging everything in for the acceleration. I'm not going to solve this one just for time's sake. I want you guys to pause and try to do it on your own. But what I will do is tell you the answer here so that you can check yourself. And the answer to this question should be two meters per second squared, okay? So if you guys want to pause and work this in your notes so that you can come up with that answer, remember your acceleration is equal to your VF minus VI over time. Okay, so that's there. Okay, so let's do an example where we're not plugging in for acceleration. So question three says a train slows down from 200 meters per second to a stop in 50 seconds. What is the train's deceleration? So in this example, we're going to do, um, it's the same formula, so the same problem. It's just in this case, we're going to wind up with that negative number. So I'm going to show you how you can come up with a negative, which will indicate deceleration. So again, if we're doing these problems and we come up with a negative number, we will have a deceleration, meaning that it is slowing down. So same formula, our acceleration, is equal to our VF minus VI over time. So we've got our formula written down. Now let's identify our variables. So our final is going to be zero meters per second because we're slowing down to a stop. So our final is going to be zero because we are stopping. Our initial 
is 200 meters per second because that's where we were starting. We were going 200 meters per second and then we slowed down. And then our time, it took us 50 seconds to do this. Okay, so if we plug this into our problem, we will get our acceleration is equal to zero meters per second because that was the initial minus 200 meters per second. all over, and I'm apologizing for this annotation, um, all over 50 seconds. So to plug this into a calculator, we would do 0 minus 200, which will give us a value of negative 200. And then negative 200 divided by 50 will give us a value of negative 4. and the units are meters per second squared. So this is just showing a deceleration and it can be a negative number, but you are still using that same formula, okay? So that means it took, the, the deceleration of the train was negative four meters per second squared, okay? And that would be your answer to this question. So we'll do some more examples. You guys will do some more work in your uh, independent practice today. But just some key points before we close this out and you guys go to practice with these formulas. Here is your equation. It's your delta V, so your change in velocity over your change in time, aka VF minus VI over delta T. Um, and in your problems today, if it says starts at rest, that means the initial velocity is zero. If an object is dropped from a position, the initial velocity is zero. If it comes to a stop, that means it's a deceleration problem. You're going to have a negative value, and that final velocity would be zero. And if something is asking what is the change in velocity, you would solve for delta V. Okay, So it's going to be possible that you're going to run into problems where you're given acceleration and you're given the time and they want you to solve for the velocity. Now, there, there weren't those problems in your notes, but in your assignment today, I am going to work some of those examples for you. So as always, you guys need to make sure you're watching the example videos before you try to do your independent practice on your own. Okay, if you have any questions, let me know. And if not, you guys are good to go start those practice problems.